we get a sailboat Chasing down the sunset as we float Round and round the globe This is Margarita, the normal one in a not quite normal marriage. And this is Peter, he's a little bit different, which keeps me on my toes. Together we are on an adventure that didn't work out as planned, but we are fighting back, so come join us! picked up around lunchtime, letting us know it was time to departure to Colombia. The day before, we did all the checkout formalities, with an eventful ride in between. The bus broke down, so we had to hitchhike. We've already done Port of Captain, then we go uh, Immigration, which is where we're going now, and then we're off. Margarita does all the paperwork, because I've been so long at sea, I've forgotten how to write. Okay, so far so good. We've only been going for six hours. We're actually uh, averaging about six and a bit knots. Um, we've just crossed, I think, the ITCZ, all the clouds, or the cloud bank, or the beginning of where the clouds start to form has disappeared. And now I can see some hazy stars out there. There is one isolated cell out there uh, that I uh, have been keeping an eye out for the last hour, it's keeping the same bearing. So if you don't have radar and you want to know if some cell is going to clobber you, basically you sit in the same position and you line up a stauncheon or a winch or whatever with the cloud bank and then after half an hour or an hour, check it. And if it's in the same position, well, it's going to clobber you. So it uh, covers about 20 degrees of horizon, so it's fairly substantial. There's a bit of lightning there, but well, what can you do? Hopefully we're going to get in front of it. Plenty of lightning behind us, but that's all in Panama and that's on the other side. Mind you, some of this wind is probably the suck-up effect going into that, uh, all those uh, cells over in uh, Panama all along the range. So what the plan is, uh, I've got a track heading for Cartagena. If uh, you're not familiar with the Cartagena region, there's an intense uh, section of strong wind. Usually daytime it's 20 to 25 and nighttime certainly upper 20s, uh, lower 30s. And sometimes it's in the low 40s and I have heard occasionally of being in the 50s. Now, uh, the forecast for us is it's going to be high 20s tonight, but that's a bit further on. Um, so we're going to get as much north as possible. The reason being is uh, mostly these strong winds around Cartagena are northeast or east northeast, east northeast, which is dead on the nose. So I'm trying to head up as north, uh, as far north as possible, so that when it does go northeast strong, I'll be able to ride it back down. <coughs> on a southeast direction. That's the current plan. I'm already five mile north of the track uh, and probably gonna be increasing. Every, every hour I'm increasing one more nautical mile north of the track. Incidentally, we have to keep the motor going uh, all night because the house bank batteries are absolutely kaput. Uh, they do not um, run the autopilot for any length of time. So um, we're gonna have to motor sail uh, just to keep the motors running, just to keep the, the boat functioning. Margarita will be uh, taking over in a little bit and I'm going to get some sleep. I didn't sleep much last night because we had thunderstorms. Uh. The other alternative is to not point so high and get to mainland Colombia as fast as possible and then run up the coast where the wind is less. The trouble with this plan is that I know there are reef areas that I must tackle in the daylight or bunny hop around overnight. And with the 50 knots predicted soon, I didn't want to get hammered on day three, since this option will likely take more than two days, and we may have to wait the strong winds out in some dangerous places. All the charter boats do this, but they run through the night without stopping for any winds. They have all the tracks saved, but I don't have any, so we must go with the first option. It must be almost time to my shift. I've been sleeping all day, so... I have no idea how many miles we're covered, how close we are to Cartagena, because I came to bed 
pretty early. Well, it was daytime because I took the seasick pill and it made me a zombie. I barely could stay awake, so Peter just sent me to bed, go and sleep, and you do the night shift. And I think it's up my time uh, to go just have some food, put on some gear, and start my watch. So far we've done 40 miles with squalls all along the way, leaving me cold and tired. At 3 in the morning I was at my limit, so it was time for a shift change and Peter took the job with a nasty sail on the horizon. Well it didn't clobber us, but it got us. So it only got to 20 knots, but it pissed down raining and it turned to be 120 degrees, went on the other tack and then it went back to normal, as it does. Anyway, so I think we're through it. I saw a break in the clouds and I'm heading to a star right now. So, uh, well, there was a star in front of me. I've lost it. But that was a bit of fun. I said to Margarita, quick, get up here. She was here like a Trojan. Quickly, we dumped the uh, heading because it was just flogging all over the place. I didn't know where I was going. I let it be known <laughs> whenever you're steering using your chart plotter. I thought, oh, I'll do a better job than the uh, autopilot because it was, the wind was changing direction so badly, or so, so completely. The trouble is, your chart plotter, it is a delay, so you never know, quite know where you are, unless you've got like a light or something. But when the squalls hit us, it was just all black. And um, it's very difficult to know exactly where you're going. So, uh, unless you have some bearing or some frame of reference you just you just don't know where you are and if you rely on your chart plotter you'll end up over steering so it's probably better to put it on auto leave it on auto and do five degree increments here and there because at least your uh, autopilot knows which way north is anyway bit of fun hopefully we're through it I don't think we are I don't think we're actually through the ITCZ at all because there's another cloud bank coming through um, but he's hoping, let's hope we don't get another squall. Finally warm after being wet for about eight hours. This is my, the inside of my wet weather gear. It's actually wetter inside than outside. It's even wetter than the puddle at the back of the cockpit. Anyway, so um, it's a bit sloppy today. Predominant swell directions from the northeast, but because it literally blew from every direction last night, we got remnants everywhere. So we're sort of wallowing here, only doing four knots. Um, a little bit ordinary, especially inside because you can't do anything. I just want about five, six knots so I can throw a sail up and it'll stabilize everything straight away. It'll just be so much nicer. Good morning, here it starts again, another day, another shift. I have to say Peter ended up being really unlucky. It had heavy, heavy rain, huge thunderstorms, the boat was rocking a lot, so I couldn't sleep barely anything, I was just resting uh, the body. So it's time to give Peter a chance to have some rest. I already have my breakfast of champions. I had my Oreos, my favorite cookies, because the boat is rocking too much for me to prepare anything to eat. And it's not too bad having Oreos. And I already also did my other duty, uh, sending our location on the map so you can see where we are. Um, if you want to see where we are real time, uh, it's one of the pa uh, benefits of being a patron, so become one if you want to check where we are. Uh, if you notice, we are not in our usual bed, we're sleeping on the um, bed bunk right near the entrance so we can go to the cockpit uh, when we need it, if Peter needs me to help him drop the sail or ease the sail, bring the sail in or vice versa, we're just right here ready to jump in and it's way safer. Now it's time to me to go.
it's a <laughs> long night. I'm off to bed. Yeah, Bit is ah. going to bed. We already put the sails up. Yeah. So one of the jobs that we going to do when we get to Cartagena is um, asking a welder to do some bars to have on the front door on the cockpit in our bedroom so we can sleep and have some room getting into the boat without being worried that someone will get into the boat at night really slowly we were not even aware because we're sleeping amongst a lot of other jobs but the most important for now will be the bottom so we can go fast and nice to Cartagena after 38 hours and 104 nautical miles. Yeah, but the last 20 nautical miles took us almost 10 hours. Pretty much. Yep. It came on the nose and it was about 20 to 25, short steep waves. It was crazy. Anyway, I'm tired. And now it's 4 a.m. and we're off to bed. Yeah, See ya! Out. Good morning from the Bay of Cartagena. I don't think we're in San Blas anymore. Gulp. It's time to check in and do all the formalities that require to get in Colombia. And the first thing would be to put the quarantine flag and um, country flag, Colombia. Unfortunately, in Colombia, we cannot do the check-in process by ourselves because mainly the port captain among other authorities, they don't want to be contacted directly tr with the cruisers. They want to use an uh, intermediary and that's the agent. So we're going to have to find out one. We were recommended a special one uh, let's see if we can find him and if we can sort our way in, in the country. Start pushing it out. We were told to find the agents at Club Nautic, so off we go. Everyone uses the dinghy dock at Club Nautico to keep their dinghy at. I noticed that nobody locked their dinghies at all, but we did every time. We found David. The agent recommended to us right at the Club Nautic office and promptly he started our check-in process. I leave Margarita to do the important talking in Spanish. What would I do without her? We just got our passport stamp, so one of the things then, immigration check. Port captain and customs has to wait out for Tuesday because unfortunately today's Sunday and tomorrow Monday it's a bank holiday, Colombian. Uh, in the patient Independence Day, so what a bugger, we're gonna have to sightseeing on the old part of Cartagena tomorrow.